What's up guys, it's Marius from Audio Judgment and today's video is going to be about those subwoofers with the, you know, those beefy speakers with thick surround that destroys your car. You know what I'm talking about. So if you plan on making an enclosure for that type of speaker, just continue watching. Here's the deal, I'm not really a fan of those subwoofers and I don't have much experience with them either. However, I know that a large number of people like them a lot. I used to like it too when everything shaked around me, but now I'm too old for that stuff. It gets fatiguing quickly and it's not for me. Most of the time I experiment the new enclosure and designs, but this time a friend of mine asked me to build an enclosure for him. And naturally, when you build a custom box for someone, you ask what are their expectations in terms of how should it sound. And almost every time you hear a variation of the following demand. I want it to sound smooth, go deep, and be loud. And then he presents me this piglet. So this is an edge subwoofer. From what I understand, it's a budget brand for SPL woofers. And this specimen is an 8 inch and can handle 500 watts. A small yet powerful speaker. Annoying part was that uh, I couldn't find any parameters on their website. I sent them an email and they replied with the parameters I needed. Small note here, the cutout diameter they gave me was not correct. The dimensions they provided were a bit larger, not by a small amount. I needed to make another cutout as those dimensions were unusable. Anyway, I need to design the box for this speaker and as I'm trying different sizes for this box, I reach the conclusion. It doesn't matter how you design this box because you will reach the same results. A frequency response that is not linear, in fact, it's a response which is severely misaligned, as a result, if you want to make a box for these types of speakers, just make a size that fits your needs and slap an L-shaped port of average size compared to the box. And you're done! Of course, if you want to go to SPL competitions, you need to do some number crunching to get the exact resonant frequency you want. But if you just plan to shake your car now and then, I firmly believe that you can successfully make a box just by eyeballing it. Because these types of subwoofers are not meant to be musical, they're simply air pumps. You have a piston, which is a speaker cone, and that piston moves a lot of air. So basically you have an air pump inside your car. But let's finish with the jokes and let me explain myself. Let's start WinISD. This is the response I came up with. I know it looks how it looks, but bear with me. Let's start a new project. So the edge woofer, one driver, vented enclosure, and let's select the QB3 alignment. Because all of you guys want a smooth sounding subwoofer. Fair enough. Besides the fact that it doesn't go particularly low in a linear fashion, this is doable. Or is it? Let's take a closer look at the volume requirements for this box. It's just a little bit over 2 liters. And you're probably bouncing with joy that you will have a box the size of a large bottle of water. But don't get too excited yet. Let's set up the port area. First, let's simulate a high output scenario, so maximum power 500 watts. And now let's switch to rear port air velocity. And this graph needs to be lower than um, 30 meters per second. So now it's lower than 10. And let's switch to the vent size. We will have a rectangular shape and uh, the outer diameter of the speaker is 22 centimeters so we are going to set the length for 22 centimeters and now we are going to progressively lower the width of the port until we uh, 
until we exceed 30 meters per second. So if you go for five, we can see we are still in the green, four centimeters, three centimeters, and I'm not comfortable lowering uh, the width any longer because it will be too narrow, even though we are way in the clear. So here we can see the airport velocity is uh, under 12 meters per second, which is very good, but I'm not going to make uh, this port any narrower. Now, the reason I'm trying to make the port narrower is because I'm trying to reduce the area of the port uh, since if you have a large area, the port length requirement is large. So, large port area, the port needs to be very long. And now we reached uh, the point where we cannot go any smaller. And we can see that the port length needs to be 375 centimeters. And remember... The box is only two liters. Try to imagine how that will look like. I devise an Excel spreadsheet to help me calculate the panel dimensions for different boxes. In this case, the only way you will fit such a long port is by folding the port in a labyrinth style. So if I open the Excel spreadsheet, you can actually find this Excel spreadsheet in my Acoustics 1.1 Pro course. So uh, let's uh, punch in the numbers. We're going to use 18 millimeter thick uh, panels and uh, let's uh, enter the values we know. So uh, box volume is 2.09, speaker displacement is uh, the volume displaced by the speaker, so the magnet and all the motor assembly, which I estimate to be around 1.2 liters. We will not have any bracing and the port height is uh, 220 millimeters port with 30 millimeters and port length will be 3745 millimeters and let's select no for double depth now because the box volume needs to be only 3.3 liters you need to make the back wall as close to the magnet as possible because otherwise the volume would be larger. Even in this case, I think it will be larger by a small amount. But let's do our little experiment. If I remember correctly, the mounting depth is around 120 millimeters. So adding the 18 millimeters of the back panel plus two millimeters of extra clearance, the external depth should be 140 millimeters. So depth, 140 millimeters, and now we can calculate the width. Boom! 1.65 meters. The port will have 31 folds. You realize how ridiculous that sounds. It's just difficult to imagine such a thing, even though you could theoretically do it. So the solution in this case is to increase the volume of the box to make the port a decent size. And as we can see in our case, let's switch to uh, frequency response. So now it's two liters. If we increase this to 10 liters, because if you make the box larger, the port length requirements will be lower. And also you will have additional space to work with. So even if I increase the box to 10 liters, which is still very small, look at the peak, we already have a five decibels peak. And in my case, I have a, a, a larger peak, but I also um, tune the box lower. You see in my case, uh, the box is 30 liters. I don't know if you agree with me or not, but for these kinds of speakers, there is a high tolerance for error when designing boxes. Of course, you can do some calculations and make it, let's say, less worse. But the fact of the matter is, if you place this speaker in a random box, you probably won't tell the difference. It will play a narrow frequency band, very loud, and instead of 43 hertz, maybe it's 47 hertz. It's the same thing unless you are competing for highest SPL. 
if you are curious about the results, it's exactly as you expect a large peak in the frequency response. Also, I checked how it sounds inside the car, and even though the amp was only 300 watts and the sub is just a small 8 inch speaker, the car shaked like crazy. Like I said, it's not my thing, but my friend was super satisfied, and that's what matters. In the end, my advice is to not buy a subwoofer and use it for something it was not meant for. If you're into music listening, buy something appropriate. If you're into chest pumping bass, buy one of these. Go ahead and flex your car, have some fun, and I'll see you next time. Peace.